You're listening to Catholic Sprouts, the daily podcast for Catholic kids that strive to plant seeds of faith. Young Squire Sprouts, today is the 16th day in the 7th month in the year of our Lord, 2022. My name is Sir Roland Paterlot, and you're listening to Saturdays with Sir Roland on Catholic Sprouts, where every Saturday we discuss the art of dragon slaying. Today we're going to finish our series on the acronym of the word SPORTS. We've talked about self-discipline, perseverance and passion, obedience, repetition and teamwork. Today we finish this series with the final S, sportsmanship. We've talked about how in life... You know, sometimes we win and sometimes we lose. Life's full of peaks and valleys, high points and low points. And with every peak and valley, there's going to be trials and temptations. When we fail, we're tempted to give up and become bitter. And when we succeed, we can be easily overcome by pride. In either case, we're going to be tempted to focus on ourselves instead of God, which is exactly what the dragons want us to do. So you see, dragons will attack you whether you win or lose. And sportsmanship is about learning humility in good times and in bad. So let me share with you an example of sportsmanship in sports that I think is a great life lesson for all of us. On June 2nd of 2010 in Detroit, Armando Galarraga of the Detroit Tigers was just one out of way from pitching a perfect game. He'd faced 26 batters and not a single person had been on base. He was one out of way. All he had to do was get out the Cleveland Indians player Jason Donald. Well, Jason Donald hit a ground ball to the right side of the infield, and the first baseman fielded it, tossed it to Galarraga, who sprinted over and touched first base. Everybody threw up their hands, all the Tigers players, all the thousands and thousands of fans in the stadium. They all began to celebrate, but then the first base umpire, Jim Joyce, shocked everybody by declaring that Donald was safe. Armando Galarraga calmly smiled at the umpire, and then he walked back to the pitcher's mound without saying a word, and then he went on to get the next batter out and completed his 3 to nothing shutout, just one out short of the perfect game. Now, after the game, replays showed that the runner was indeed out, and Jim Joyce, realizing he had made a bad call, he immediately told the media that he'd blown the call, and he went over and personally apologized to Amondo Galarraga for taking away his perfect game. Galarraga actually hugged and forgave Jim Joyce. He said, He probably feels more bad than me. Nobody's perfect. Everybody's human. I understand. I give the guy a lot of credit for saying I need to talk to you. You just don't see umpires do that after the game. So I gave him a hug. Now, both of these guys showed tremendous sportsmanship. Jim Joyce admitted his mistake and he apologized. Armando Galarraga didn't throw a temper tantrum or complain. He was obedient to the umpire, continued playing the game, trying his best, and forgave the guy who took away his perfect game. So when it comes to dragon slaying, it's not about whether you win or lose. It's truly about how you play the game. Sometimes dragons trick us into letting our emotions get the best of us. And we really get down on ourselves if we lose, or we get overconfident and think we're really awesome when we win. But learning sportsmanship is about learning how to fail and how to succeed. Both winning and losing are an opportunity to grow in virtue or to grow in vice. And it's your choice how you're going to react. Even the dragons can't keep you from becoming a saint. Only you can do that. When I was in high school, one of my opponents in track was a guy named Phil. I hated running against Phil. He was always so good, and I knew he was a strong and faithful Catholic because he he wore a scapular that was hanging around his neck every single race I ran against him. And I also wear the brown scapular, which was given to us by Our Lady of Mount Carmel, whose feast we celebrate today. So I know that those who wear the scapular have a special consecration to Mary, and it calls us to a life of prayer and penance. Perhaps that's why Phil was so good, and I hated running against him. He had no off days. He always gave his best, and I knew it was going to be a battle every time I faced him. And in life, sometimes we encounter other people who seem to be on the other team. We get upset when we interact with them, and they often challenge our faith and our beliefs. Not just coaches and teammates, but sometimes people who persecute us and utter every kind of evil against us, as Jesus said. Or sometimes it's just when we lose at a game to our brother or sister. It's important at those times to remember that people are never the enemy. Becoming a saint is about helping other people become saints. God loves all of his children. He wants all of us in heaven. So when we encounter people who don't believe what we believe or treat us poorly or brag or just make us mad— 
we must remember that sportsmanship is not about winning arguments. It's not about getting more points on the scoreboard to make others look bad or make ourselves look good. Sportsmanship focuses on winning souls for Christ. It's not about being right. It's about helping souls encounter Jesus and sharing the, the joy of the gospel. So this week, my challenge for you is to focus on winning and losing with grace and humility. When things go well, the glory should go to God. Say thank you to God for allowing you to succeed. When things go poorly and you're tempted to get angry, react with patience and grace. Congratulate the other team and vow to just continue trying your best next time and trust in God's grace to do the rest. Even if the other team brags or complains or doesn't practice sportsmanship themselves, even if the umpire makes a bad call. So to help you, I'll leave you with a reflection that St. Mother Teresa kept on her wall called, Do It Anyway. People are often unreasonable, irrational, and self-centered. Forgive them anyway. If you're kind, people may accuse you of selfish ulterior motives. Be kind anyway. If you're successful, you will win some unfaithful friends and some genuine enemies. Succeed anyway. If you're honest and sincere, people may deceive you. Be honest and sincere anyway. What you spend years creating, others could destroy overnight. Create anyway. If you find serenity and happiness, some people may be jealous. Be happy anyway. The good you do today will often be forgotten. Do good anyway. Give the best you have and it will never be enough. Give your best anyway. In the final analysis, it's between you and God. It was never between you and them anyway. So until next week, I'll leave you under the protection of St. Michael the Great Archangel, St. Joseph the Terror Dragons, and Mary, Queen of the Angels, Our Lady of Grace, and the woman whose seed crushed the head of the dragon. That's it for Catholic Sprouts today. We'll be back tomorrow. But until then, continue to grow in your faith and truly sprout into the beautiful creation that God created you to be. Hey, parents and kids. Thanks for listening to Saturdays with Sir Roland. This is John, Sir Roland Squire. In case you haven't heard, we have a Dragon Slayers training guild that we would love for you to be a part of. Just go to ExtraordinaryMission.com slash Dragon Slayers, register your name and email, and we'll send you one email a week on Saturday mornings with a new idea or resource. This week, we'll send you a copy of the reflection, Do It Anyway. And the final podcast of my interview with Major League Baseball pitcher Craig Stammen as he teaches us more about sportsmanship. And remember, listen to Catholic Sprouts every day, including Saturdays with Sir Roland. This show is a production of the Spoke Street Media Podcast Network. For more great podcasts, visit SpokeStreet.com.